Hey, what's going on, Rob? How you doing? Hey, Trey. Uh, like we were saying before the interview started, it's really good, you know, to see you. Uh, anybody that's watching this video, hopefully, you know, you're safe and hopefully, um, you know, you're in good health, you know, because there's a lot of things going on right now. So it's good to see you. And um, I just appreciate you having me on, man. And no doubt, no doubt. Hey, so, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. So I know just for the audience, so I can shape this for the audience real quick, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you have any type of, you know, advice, if you just getting started out there in IT, right, and you need to know who to get started with, all right, this right here is a good guy to get started with. We're going to go over it. But, you know, just for the audience, if you could give us, like, the elevator speech, right, of who you are, what's your background, and what are what services do you provide out there? Um, well, uh, it's a long story, but uh, it ain't no long story. I'll just make it short. So um, just like uh, Trey, you know, I fought for you guys' freedom. Uh, so I was in the military for, uh, how long was I in the military? I was in the military for eight years. Um, you know, when I first joined the military, I didn't really know, you know, what direction I wanted to go in. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And when I went to the recruiter, you know, he told me, hey, you know, tech is um, a good spot to be in. Um, you know, on the test that I took, I got a high enough score to pick my job. So I decided to go into um, IT. So uh, fast forward, you know, I went in the military, deployed, things were fine. Um, and then my last two years in the military, I actually started teaching um, troops. So I started teaching them, you know, their jobs, started teaching them about tech. And that's when I really started getting into um, teaching certifications. Uh, the first certification I taught uh, was A plus, then I moved on to net plus, and I moved on security plus. And now I've taught, you know, Cisco stuff, Microsoft stuff, um, a little bit of everything. So once I get out of the military, um, I started teaching for colleges, started teaching for vocational schools. And about two years ago, I created a master IT, where it's an online platform, I'm helping uh, students pass um, the exam. So um, as of right now, uh, I know 2020, uh, people want to hit the reset button, but um, for me and my school and my students, um, I've actually been able to get around about one person a week certified, and I'm hoping to um, double that um, this month. I think, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that was that was that was that was my summary. I don't think I missed anything. So that's me. I'm Rob. Um, I'm here with Trey, trying to help you guys. All right, Rob. Hey, check it out. So check this out, right? So. You have a YouTube channel, right? Just like myself. And, um, yes, you know, in, in doing this and, you know, in helping people, you know, we get bombarded all the time with like questions like, hey, how do I get started in IT? Okay. So if I was someone and I was reaching out to you, right, and I was emailing you and I was asking you, hey, how do I get started in IT? What would you recommend to them? Um, it's pretty simple. Start. Um, a lot of times I think people deliberate, they have, you know, a paralysis by analysis. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Um, with Google, with the advent of Google, um, a lot of information is out there and that could be a good thing and a bad thing as well. So it's like so much information, so many different Facebook groups, so many YouTube channels. One person tells you this, one person tells you that. I would say, and what I recommend for most of my students is just getting a solid foundation, right? Um, Hacking sounds super cool and sexy. Cybersecurity is super cool. Uh, security is where the money's at. But if you don't have a good foundation, you'll never get to um, that next level. So my advice would be to get a solid uh, foundation. So since what do you, um, like what do you said, mean by like what do you mean by like a foundation? So a foundation just pretty much learning the fundamentals, right? You can't uh, go to uh, you know, a basketball camp and you don't know how to dribble, you don't know how to pass, and you're trying to dunk, all right? You just got there, <laughs> uh, everybody doing warm, you're trying to dunk, right? Uh, you ain't stretched, you ain't did nothing. So you gotta get uh, fundamentals. And most students, um, like I said, so I'm geared towards certifications. Most students, I always tell them to go towards a certification called um, A+. It's a CompTIA certification, and it pretty much is like your high school diploma uh, when it comes to IT. So you get a really good foundation in cloud computing, virtualization, software, hardware, pretty much all the things that's going to be covered no matter what direction you go in, right? So it's pretty much, or if you don't want to look at like your high school diploma, it would be like your general studies uh, when you're in college. It gives you a good foundation. And from there, you can figure out, okay, when I was doing A+, I really like networking. 
sector. So maybe I need to go to Network Plus or CCNA. When I was in A Plus, I like security. So maybe I need to go to Security Plus or CEH. And all the all those things I just mentioned were of their uh, certifications. So in summary, um, just pretty much figure out your path and get a strong foundation. And my recommendation is not uh, it's not viable. It's not gospel. It's not. Um, for sure, but my suggestion, I tell literally all my students to go grab A plus first. Okay, so like with A plus, right? So, what is the purpose of like A plus? Like, because I've heard that before in my studies. You know, I'm acting like I'm a student or something, right? Right, right, right. I've heard, right. I heard a lot of people say that, like, hey, you should go get A plus. Like, what exactly is the purpose of me getting A plus? Since that's the first stop in my IT journey and career. Your well, the purpose for me, you know, for you getting A-plus is for you to give me some money. No, well, the, purpose, <laughs> right. uh, the purpose for A-plus is um, to show employers that you know what the hell you're talking about, right? So uh, you can say, I can do this and I can do that and I'm the greatest ever, but that actual certification kind of solidifies, okay, this person actually does have um, the knowledge to, to back it up. Now, even though, um, you know, I love certifications, um, they can literally change your life. That has to be coupled with, you know, just so no, no confusion. That has to be coupled with experience, right? Mm. So mm. the piece of paper is cool, but you have to have the actual experience. So going back to where she, where you should, uh, I almost had a seizure. Hold on, let me let me start over. Going back okay, to where you okay. should start: uh, certification, experience and building a network right so make sure that you okay what certification do i want to get okay i know i want to get xyz then building up your experience um the experience part is very important and it's a lot easier to get than you think um experience can come from anywhere if you ever reset your router if you ever troubleshoot at your iphone if you ever helped your grandma uh get on youtube all that stuff counts as experience, right? So a lot of people discount this stuff. Everybody know how to do this. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to do this. So I would say experience, build a good network, and find um, the right information and listen to the right people. So hopefully, hopefully that was a good enough answer. Okay, okay. Now, hey, so you know you yourself, right? Being an instructor, okay. So obviously, you know you hold several certifications yourself, right? So mm -hmm. if we stick within like the comp tier realm, you know, your A plus, your network plus, your security plus, cloud plus, so on and so forth, right? In your experience, because I get this question a lot, in your experience, which one do you think is the hardest one? And if you had to choose, if you was going to get all three, which one would you start with? Um, what is the hardest one? The hardest one, uh, I mean, I like this answer, but it's subjective. Mm -hmm. um, hard to me may be easy to you. Easy right, to you, right. may, you know, and vice versa, because it depends on a person's experience. Um, have they mm -hmm. worked in the field before? Have they took the damn test before? Um, stuff like that. But for me, the hardest uh, CompTIA exam that I've ever taken and um, a, an exam, oh, another thing, uh, an exam that I failed, right? Uh, I failed a uh, CAS plus um, that's kind of okay. like a little bit up the ladder than security plus and stuff like that but i failed cast plus and okay. sorry for going on a tangent but this is just on um, my mind um if during this journey right in it you're gonna fail uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna fail certifications um you're gonna not know what's going on all the time um you may have angry customers but all that all that is a part of you know growth and your maturation process so just remember there's no losses you know only lessons so uh just to answer your question though cas plus uh was my uh most difficult uh, certification to get and another thing uh gang is i know money is important i know i know that money makes the world go around you know sprint and the mortgage company want their money but sometimes you have to kind of take a step back and figure out what your goals are because it's like oh if i get cas plus i'm gonna make a hundred thousand dollars a year but one that's probably not true because you don't have you know the experience um, that would be needed to make $100,000 a year. And then, like I said, you haven't built that solid foundation. Um, and another thing with solid foundation or building a solid foundation is that uh, your earning potential will be limitless because you've built a strong foundation and then you can get Network Plus, then you can get Security Plus, then you get CCNA. And every time, from what I've seen in my personal experience and with students, 
damn near every time you get a certification, you're going to get um, an increased salary. And if, if you're at a place that doesn't want to increase your salary when you get certified, just find somewhere else to uh, work. But my bad for going um, on a tangent, but CAS Plus would probably be my most difficult. And that's the, that's the last exam that I failed. Um, I eventually figured it out, but um, yeah, that one uh, whooped my ass pretty bad. <laughs> right, I've had a, I've had a couple. Um, I think the, for me, uh, yeah, I, I took a ICND one, and uh, mm. that was the first Cisco exam, and I failed that one the first time because it was nothing like CompTIA. You know, CompTIA, you can go back, and if you think you're uh, unsure about a question, you know, you can always go back to number three, and then number right, three right. might tip you off to the right answer for number ten. You know what I mean? But Cisco not, is just not, straight not through. Cisco. <laughs> not Cisco. Right. Right. If you don't know, you don't know me. Exactly. Exactly. I got the uh, new CCNA coming up here pretty soon too. So I'm be on uh, make like sure I'm, make sure I'm prepared for that. Hey, now so yeah. as far as as far as your like your students go, so can you tell us like okay, so hey, you're a teacher like so what kind of classes do you teach? Do you teach uh online? Do you teach in person at a university? Like what where, where do you actually uh teach at? Now, you know, currently with the uh with the situation we got going on, uh, I can't really teach in person, you know, anymore. So, um, like right. I said before, I used to teach for colleges and stuff, but since I started doing my own thing, um, I was doing uh, boot camps in person. I also have um, online uh, courses as well. Um, and not to toot my own horn at all, but shit, toot toot. Uh, right. <laughs> after teaching for so many different organizations, not so many, but after teaching for different organizations and seeing different things, I kind of figured out, you know, what was lacking. Um, some um, uh, courses or some classes, it's either way too much shit, um, the wrong shit, or not enough shit. Um, excuse right, my language. Right, but right. Uh, so um, I kind of wanted to, you know, hone in. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to know. This is the stuff that's going to be on the exam. This is the stuff that we need to focus on, right? Um, so once I figured out that stuff, um, I went ahead and, you know, I made everything. Made the curriculum, uh, shot all the videos. Um, I didn't edit them, uh, but pretty much it's my baby. You know, it was it was uh, an idea, and now, you know, it's a real thing. And uh, last month I passed, uh, uh, we got a little bit over 1,200 students trained, you know, straight through uh, my program. So um, I can't mm. complain, man. But yeah, so so right now I'm primarily just uh, online, online uh, due to the circumstances. Okay, okay. Because like I've actually like on your channel, right? Like I've seen you teaching, you know, inside of a classroom, you know, right. teaching different students and stuff like that. So now what you're saying is like you've kind of given up the uh, role of teaching in, in like a traditional brick and mortar school and now you've moved to like your own specialized online type training. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like say... I want to say I've given it up, but it just, um, I just created something that just made more sense for me and then the mm -hmm. students. So uh, now, cause like all the stuff that I created is self paced. So if you want to rock out at three o'clock in the morning, if you want to rock out after work, before work, it's all there for you. So whenever you want to, if you want to take two weeks to knock it out, some students do, uh, if you want to take a month, it's all up to you. And then you can keep on looking over. And then another thing, um, you know, as the students go through it, um, you know, I reach out to them for lessons learned, you know, what am I missing? Is there anything that you uh, want me to add? And then, you know, from that, uh, from that um, advice or from that feedback, you know, I go ahead and throw that stuff in the course um, as well. Mm, okay. So what, what, uh, so just for, in your personal experience, like what, what's, um, what's, what certification do students kind of have the most trouble with if they're, first starting out most trouble with um i'll say i can't say i can't really hone in on uh a particular certification and just say, oh this is this is super difficult because mm -hmm. like i said i don't know who's gonna watch this so i want to be you know kind of careful with my words like i said a lot of this stuff is subjective because i easy right, right. hard that kind that kind of uh depends but what i'll say is that um, most students just with the CompTIA certifications, especially seem like they don't study the right stuff. Because even if you have, I don't know if you guys are aware, but CompTIA has um, domains and objectives inside of domains. You can look at, you know, all the domains. So it may be six domains and then it may be a hundred objectives. Bad thing is 
Um, they don't tell you, you know, how many questions or don't tell me what's going to be focused on. And then a lot of times what students um, mess up at is whatever they don't understand, whatever seems difficult to them, they'll hone in on that. Like, oh, this shit is difficult. This got to be on the test. This was this got to be what they're going to be focusing on. And then they get on the exam. And it's only one question about that. So right, like, right, like I said, right. I think it's just the most difficult thing is studying the right thing and just listening to the right people. Okay. Hey, so tell me a little bit about Rob the person, right? So like you're from Detroit, Michigan, go mm -hmm. Lions, what'd you say? Yes, I do. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, so what, what made you want to leave Detroit, man? Uh, gunshots. I mean, what else? I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty rough, man. It was pretty rough. Um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what you don't know. And before I left Detroit, I didn't really think about nothing else. You know, the the couple of blocks past my house, I wasn't like that was the world pretty that much, world, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um not getting too specific, but uh, you know, when you're younger, you don't know, man. When you're younger, you think you're invincible. And I was doing, you know, certain things that uh that I wouldn't really approve of now. So what I did was I left. I was like, I, I probably need to get up out of here. So I left. Um, um, and I went to, where did I move to? I moved to, um, San Diego. All my family is still in Detroit, but I just felt that, that for me, it wasn't really conducive to my growth and productivity to, um, stay in Detroit. And I think a lot of times you kind of need to get away from your environment, um, uh, to grow. And then, like I said, it wasn't anybody, um, pretty much in my immediate circle, there wasn't anybody doing anything productive. They sure in the hell wasn't doing nothing with no, uh, with no computers, you know, they were right, doing right. stuff, uh, you know, maybe with text, not in tech, if that, if that makes sense. So, uh, <laughs> right. so, uh, so that's kind of what made me get away from that. And, you know, and I think, you know, you know, praises to the most high that, um, you know, I kind of brought my horizons and saw some other things. Um, cause I think that's another thing as far as me, I wanted to be a positive uh, representation, you know, and just show other people that, you know, you can get into tech, um, you can be in technology and it's cool, you know, because a lot of times, for one, um, when you think about technology and tech stuff, I'm not sure that African-Americans are top of mind, you know, when people think about that. And then if you do, you think it's some lame kind of, you know, weird kind of guy in a damn dungeon somewhere or in his mama's basement, you know, doing stuff. So I just kind of wanted to show people like you can win, you know, in tech. Um, and, you know, if, if I can do it, you know, anybody can do it. So as long as you got determination, uh uh, yeah, that's it. I think, I think I answered your question. If I did tell you, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So what, 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 what like made you gravitate like just personally, right? Cause like there's many professions out there and then even like yourself coming from Detroit, I know it was bad, had to get away from it. But you know, a lot of people I met and a lot of people I know to this day, you know, it's kind of like where as you growing up, they kind of push forward on you, right? Like, so when you talk about making, right. like, making it out the neighborhood, right? You got the military, or Ford is a good way, all those benefits they got over there, you know what I'm saying? So like yeah. what made you like want to gravitate towards technology or was it like when you went to the military that they just asked you what you want to do? Or what made you gravitate toward it yourself? I mean, you know, like I said, when I, how old was I? I was 20, how old was I doing? I was 23 when I joined the military. And honestly, I was gotten technology because I wouldn't have the foresight or the forethought to think, Oh, you know, that's what the money gonna be. I can get a good job. I was just thinking, like, I'm pretty sure these guys get shot at the least. So that's kind of why I wanted technology, right? So I'm like, I don't think these guys go, you know, uh, you know, being ignorant. I didn't know that, you know, once you get over there, they shooting at everything. Yeah, nobody. They ain't gonna be like, oh, he fixed the computers, we ain't gonna shoot at him. Uh, but um, that's kind of what guided me um, in technology. What made me stick with technology is um, once I started training uh, students, honestly, because. Uh, I didn't really fall in love with tech instead I started teaching and pretty much pouring into students, right? It's just, okay. it's just an amazing feeling, man. When you take somebody from literally not knowing anything uh, and being mm -hmm. confused, then they get that light bulb. Like, oh, I understand. You know, and then, like I said, you know, at least trying to present stuff in a, in a, in a relatable way, you know, maybe crack a joke here and there and just, um, that's pretty much made me stick with technology and education. And then, you know, as I got older, I, it's the future, you know, it's not going anywhere. So I might as well be a part of it. And another thing that I tell people um, with automation and AI and all this other stuff, it's better to be, you know, the person fixing that stuff than getting replaced by that stuff, you know? So uh, that's pretty much what made me stick with technology. Cause I mean, it's the future, it's the present. Um, so yeah, that's why I stuck with it. 
Hey, so check this out. Now, you know, as we, you know, we are, I like to say, uh, of age, right? Um, like, so you talk about yourself, age. man. So, no, <laughs> I ain't shit. I'm with y'all. Talk about yourself. Hey, well, I'm over. I'll be, I'll be forty in two months. Hey, I'm thirty five. I'll be thirty five <laughs> next month. Thirty five. It feel good to be, man. They know. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. But like, yeah. so you know. But I know, you know, when you, when you're a lot younger, right? Like you, patience mm -hmm. is kind of like, you know, what I'm saying, like you, you run thin on it. You know, what I'm saying. Right. But it's like, what, what do you feel like as far as you know? Because like, it's a large debate of whether you need, you know, formal education to do a job or, you know, should you just go the certification route? You know what I'm saying? What is your, what is your take on that? Um, as always, Trey, I'm gonna be a thousand percent transparent. Um, okay. If the military didn't pay for my master's degree, I wouldn't have a master's degree. Um, okay. I think in technology, the certifications and experience are gonna trump the um, degree. Only reason I say that, because most of the time a degree is going to be um, super expensive, right? And um, it's not, you don't update your skills. If you got um, a computer science degree from 1995, how useful is that right now? It's not really useful, you know? Uh, so with right. the certifications, you have to be um, a continuous learner. You can't, just like me, I teach, I teach this shit, but I can't just, for one, I got to stay sharp, you know, just in case, you know, when the students ask me. And two, I have to keep my certifications up to date. Mm -hmm. um, because me, for one, I don't feel comfortable teaching um, anything that I'm not certified in. So I would right. say um, for technology, especially um, certifications is the route to go. Now, is going to college the wrong? Is, is it wrong? No, of course not. If you want to get a degree, go get a degree. Um, but I would say if you're looking for an immediate impact, if you're looking for um, the most bang for your buck, I would say um, certifications because, you know, it's going to be less time, less money. And um, you can just jump right into um, the workforce and the job force as, as opposed to waiting two to four years to get your degree. Hmm. Okay. Hey, so check this out. So like from the students that you have, right, or the students that you've had, mm -hmm. like let's talk about like a student that you had six months ago, right, and they become certified or whatever. What type of stories have they come back and tell you? Because, you know, I know being a drill sergeant, right? That's the, that's my teaching experience. You know, I was drill sergeant for about three and a half years. And just, you know, I still get emails to this day. Drill sergeant, you help me out, blah, 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 blah. So like what type yeah. of success stories have your students come back to you with, man? Man, um, like I said, I'm not trying to be mushy or nothing, but that's yeah. one of the main things. That's one of the main things that made me want to do this is that like literally impacting and changing people's lives. And one of my favorite stories is, you know, I had a truck driver um, that was, I want to say he was 61 or 62 or 60 something when he met me, right? So we rocking out, you know, I got him, I didn't get him anything. He, he uh, got A plus, net plus and security plus, worked hard, had a lot of determination. And um, within a year or two, you know, he went from driving trucks, which they make, you know, good money, um, but he just was tired of, he tired of being on the road. Um, he was going for, he went from that to being a security analyst in about a year or two. Now, like I said, no fairy tales. He put in an ass of work a lot of time and he was dedicated and determined that, hey, this is what I want um, to happen. Um, but it, there's a plethora of, of stories. You know, I have, I have one um, um, lady, she was working at um, the dollar store and after uh, about nine, I ain't gonna say that, probably about a year, uh, she went from working at the dollar store to becoming a network engineer. Uh, there's just, you know, there's just a bunch of stories. Now, um, what I'll say is this, um, just because you get this piece of paper, just because you get a certification, nobody owes you anything. It ain't, oh, I got certified, now you got to put me on at Google. Uh, not at all. You still got to put in the work. And like I said, um, the network as well. Um, networking, um, experience, and then once you get that piece of paper, from what I've seen, you know, you, you're damn near uh, unstoppable. Um, and then, like I said, just having that strong skill set um, and technology, uh, it's going to be too easy. So uh, I got a bunch of stories. I could kind of be here all day, man. But like I said, once from the first time, because just like you said, um, I wasn't um, a drill sergeant, but I was, a, a, you know, an instructor at the schoolhouse. So, you know, I'm still getting emails from them like, hey, uh, hey, Rob, thanks for blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, man, it's um, – and even that, even if they don't take a course with me, even from the YouTube videos, or even if it's an Instagram post, you know, just giving that information and pouring out knowledge, man, it just, it just, um, it just feels good, man. 
Man, that's a very powerful thing, you know, especially you talk about, you know, like truck driver, right? You know, the story mm -hmm. you told about the truck driver. It's like, man, that's very powerful because, you know, you take a guy like, I've talked to many truck drivers, my uncle drove trucks, you know what I mean? And, you know, mm -hmm. he told me, he was like, Trey, he's like, man, if you, if you drove trucks cross country and that's all you did for like three and a half years straight, you would be a millionaire. But it's like, you're on the road, you're lonely. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to keep on moving, like, you know, so it's like, and then, you know, when you think about it, right, like when you're going into IT, right, and you get of age, like like a gentleman you said was 61 years old, like, do you mm -hmm. really still want to be doing hard labor at that age? Because you still got four or five years to go before you can actually retire, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know That's about right. you, like, but, you know, me, like, when I'm 52, like, I'm not trying to be climbing on nobody's roof or doing anything no. like that. I'm trying to be in somewhere that's temperature controlled, you know what I'm talking about? That's right. <laughs> no, no, you got it, man. Cause, um, and that was one of the reasons he said it is just because, um, like you said, nobody wants your body going to break down. I mean, that's just, that's just going to happen. Uh, and as we know, you know, being in the military, it's going to break down a little bit faster shit than the, uh, than the, than the average person. So, uh, if you have a skill set, you know, where you just, like you said, you can work from home and right now that's kind of, that's extra beneficial. You know, you can work from home, get you can work that. from the airplane, you can be in the airport, you can make, you know, as many moves as you want to make. And, I, and another thing that I, you know, that I tell all my guys and girls is that the damn opportunities are endless. You, there is no set lane. You want to do networking, do networking. You want to do coding, do coding. You want to do cybersecurity, do cybersecurity. You want to do consulting, do consulting. There's so many different um, skills and lanes that you can get in. And another thing is um, with technology, you don't always have to have an employer. I think that's a different uh, conversation for a different day, but you don't always have to wait. You have a skill set to where, you, you know, your family don't need it. You know, it's probably a mom and pop uh, a liquor store or not liquor store. There's a mom and pop shop that needs, you know, maybe their internet set up. You can help out at your church, you know, so on and so forth. So um, technology is a spot to be in. I don't know. I don't know how that could be argued, man, at all. Right, right, right. So, man, so, man, you know, life, like, um, like I think it was, uh, it was either too short or it was either Jay-Z, but one of them said it was like, it was all good just a week ago, right? That was Malcolm X. So, that was Michael Max? I did, I did. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, ain't three folks, they red said that, man. Jay-Z, 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 um, Jay-Z, um, Jay Z, uh, Jay Z said it because it was uh, him and Too Short had a song called "It Was uh, It Was All Good yeah. Just a Week Ago." Yep. it was all good just a week ago. Yeah, that's kind of like how it was, man. It was like you know, two months ago, you know, everything was perfect, everything was okay, man. And then right. here you come with the whole pandemic situation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I think it sent a lot a wake up call to a lot of people, man, to say, hey, you know, I need to find an additional source or way to make money where you know. Now, because the world is changing, man, you know, a lot man. of these stores now are just saying, you know what, uh, I don't think we need employees anymore. You know, we're just going to have call centers. People can work from home or things of that nature. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I think it's very important out there for people to try to pick up additional skills to uh, be able to create income for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. I can, I can agree with you more, man. And then even without the pandemic, you just have to see, you know, it was coming. Like, what do you think the self out check, uh, the self checkout lane is? You know, eventually, you know, cashiers are going to be uh, obsolete. I don't think it's coming no time soon, but you know, yeah. a lot of things are going to be uh, obsolete. So, like I said, it's better for you to be, you know, a victor of technology as opposed to a victim. Because a lot of, like I said, a lot of times and a lot of jobs are getting replaced, and then a lot of employers um, are seeing that. Man, I don't think we need as many people as we need. Or, you know, with mm -hmm. this. Um, with this pandemic that happened, it's like, I don't, we don't really need you, but we don't need that position or we can cut this or we can have five people do the same thing. And um, unfortunately um, with the uh, pandemic and the effects that it's had on the economy, I got a feeling, you know, an unemployment being high, I got a feeling that, um, you know, the job market is about to get a lot more competitive, right? And employers are going to be a lot more selective because it's like, okay, if they don't open up the brick and mortar, uh, uh, place that they had or the office space that they had and you working from the house and they know it's going to be an influx of resumes you want to make sure that yours is um, up to snuff and then like you said even if you don't want to wait on an employer with these skills you can make something happen just like me you know uh, 
you know, I know how to do this, I know how to do that. And I decided to, you know, educate other people. And that's another space that's going to be uh, humongous right now. And then they, without, or I think kids are going to start going to school, going back to school soon. But right now, you know, kids aren't in school. So it's just, it's so many opportunities, man. You know, like I said, um, it's unfortunate what is happening. But right now, you know, you can uh, curl, uh, curl up in a ball and get in the fetal position and oh, it's all messed up, I don't know what to do. Or you can figure out a way to make something happen, man. You can, even through a pandemic, even through, you know, the worst of times, you can make something happen. Hey, that's right, man. That's right. Hey, so let's talk about your YouTube channel, you know, a little bit. So, like, uh, you have a YouTube channel. What's the name of your uh, channel? Uh, same thing, Master IT. Okay, Master IT. So what did, what do you talk about on your YouTube channel? A little bit of everything, um, but it's, ma it's mainly uh, considered or geared towards certification preparation. So I'll do um, maybe like an A-plus test prep or security plus test prep or um, I'll collab with somebody that uh, may be a little bit more well-versed in the area than I am. Um, I talk about coding on there, pretty much certification, um, IT career uh, pathway advice, and just assistance. So, so like I said, showing people, hey, because like I said, right now, just in general, uh, you know, money is a sensitive issue. So I just kind of want to give people like, hey, this is my teaching style. This is who I am. You know, if you want to come rock out with me in a class, you can. But here goes some free stuff if you can't, you know, afford a course or here's, you know, a taste of what it'll be like to have me as an instructor. So um, the main focus, though, is um, getting people certified on, the, on, you know, my website and on uh, my YouTube channel. Okay, okay. So like, as far as like the, um, um, you know, some of the resources, like what you have a website where people can go and kind of like sign up for your classes and things of that nature? Indeed I do. Um, it's um, IT Master Key, itmasterkey.com. And on there I have self-paced courses for A+, Net+, uh, Security+, uh, Cisco. Um, I partnered with, um, a PMP instructor, so I have PMP uh, courses on there. I have a live coding course, have uh, Microsoft courses as well, and I'm also a CompTIA partner. So I have um, and trade for you too. If you um, taking any CompTIA exam soon, I get discounts on all um, the vouchers because um, I'm not sure if people are aware, but when you take the test, you know it costs money. So um, instead of paying full price, uh, I give uh, people discounted. Uh, vouchers. So pretty much if you've taken a, uh, an exam, I got everything you need. Practice tests, simulations, and on-demand lectures. Hey, make sure y'all, hey, make sure y'all keep them accountable now. He just told you, you know what I'm saying? So when y'all come see Trey, y'all go over there to uh, Rob, y'all say, hey, Trey brought you. me here, and you told me. I got you. <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. I got you, man. It's only right. I got you. Yeah, man, that's good, man. That's good. Hey, so, you know, what did you what did you like best about uh, serving in the military? Um, I think this is the same uh, sentiment or the same answer that most people have. The, you know, the family, the additional family that I got. Um, and another thing, learning to work with a multitude of people, um, whether it's, um, you know, a different race, a different gender, a different uh, mindset, different skill set. In, in the military, you're literally going to run across a little bit of, you know, everybody from everywhere to know a little bit of everything. So that's one thing. The brotherhood um, or sisterhood, you know, the family that I picked up, you know, from, you know, serving with people. Because I got a good, you know, a good little group of people that I still can uh, still uh, stay in contact with and probably will never um, never not be in contact with. And then, like I said, just um, learning leadership and uh, just how, how to uh, maneuver uh, with anybody and around anybody, pretty much. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, all right, man. I think that's about it. All right. Hey, Rob. So, hey, check it out, man. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by, man. Thank you for blessing us with your presence today. And, uh, you know, maybe we look forward to having you back in the future, man, as we uh, progress in this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Thank you so much. Uh, one thing, uh, gang, for everybody that watches this um, video, well, like I said, one thing, uh, make sure you educate yourself. Uh, make sure that you have a strong network. And last but not least, make sure that you like this video, share this video, and subscribe to uh, Trey's channel. Other than that, have a good day.